Well, we are halfway through Nudpot Pomo, and I thought I'd tell you a little something about myself. I always listen to the dragons that are in my studio, and there's 27 of them. So if I don't listen, I can be in trouble. And they came up with tonight's book. So join me for Book Bites with the book lady, Dragon Style. Well, hi, everybody. It's Gretchen Shepard tonight with Book Bites with the book lady, as I said, dragon style. Yes, dragons. I love dragons. I have about 27 of them looking down on me now in my studio all around here and several books about dragons and all kinds of wonderful things. And I tend to listen to them when they tell me things. And they suggested that tonight's book ought to be about them in a way (laughs) it's a wonderful book tonight and the book is a fantasy it's called talking to dragons by patricia c reed and it's interesting she starts out with a little bit about herself and i wanted to read this because it's an eye-opener for me about a writing style and it's an interesting style that she talks about and not one that I expected and I never would have known if I hadn't read the introduction so here is an excerpt from the introduction that the author wrote for her book talking to dragons here it is Talking to Dragons is different from the other books of the Enchanted Forest Chronicles. I wrote it first, when I was still very much a new writer. It was my third novel ever. It was my first try at first-person narration, and the first time I wrote a book without having any idea what it would be about when I started. I didn't have a clue what was going on until nearly halfway through the manuscript. Also, it was not what I was intending to write at the time. Oh my! (laughs) Now, that's an interesting way to start a novel. And the novel that she has, this is book four of the Enchanted Forest Chronicles. And it's called Talking to Dragons by Patricia Reed. Hmm. Maybe it was the dragons that were talking to her when she didn't know exactly what she was going to write. Well, I'm going to go with that theory. But here we go. Talking to Dragons, Chapter 1. In which Daystar leaves home and encounters a lizard. Mother taught me to be polite to dragons, particularly polite, I mean. She taught me to be ordinary polite to everyone. Well, it makes sense. With all the enchanted princesses and disguised wizards and transformed kings and so on wandering around, you never know whom you might be talking to. But dragons are a special case. Not that I ever actually talked to one until after I left home. Even at the edge of the enchanted forest, dragons aren't exactly common. The principle is what matters, though. Always be polite to a dragon. It's harder than it sounds. Dragon etiquette is incredibly complicated, and if you make a mistake... The dragon eats you. Fortunately, I was well trained. Dragon etiquette isn't the only thing mother taught me. Reading and writing are unusual skills for a poor boy, but I learned them. Music, too, and fighting. Don't ask me where mother learned to use a sword. Until I was 13, I didn't know we even had one in the house. I even learned a little magic. 
Mother wasn't exactly pleased, but growing up on the edge of the enchanted forest, I had to know some things. Mother is tall, about two inches taller than I am, and slender, and very impressive when she wants to be. Her hair is black like mine, but much longer. Most of the time she wears it in two braids wound around and around her head. But when she really wants to impress someone, she lets it hang straight to her feet. A lot of the disguised princes who stop at our cottage on their way to the enchanted forest thought mother was a sorceress. You can't really blame them. Who else would live at the edge of a place like that? Sometimes I thought they were right. Mother always knew what directions to give them, even if they didn't tell her what they were looking for. I never saw her do any real magic, though, until the day the wizard came. I knew right away that he was a wizard, not because of his brown beard or his blue and brown silk robes, although no one but a wizard can walk around in blue and brown silk robes for very long without getting really dusty. It wasn't even his staff. I knew he was a wizard because he had the same feel of magic that the unicorns and griffins have when you catch a glimpse of them farther out in the forest. I was surprised to see him because we didn't get too many wizards. Well, actually... We'd never gotten any. Mother said that most of them preferred to go into the forest through the gates of mist and pearl at the top of the crystal falls, or through the caves of fire and night if they could manage it. The few that went into the forest in other ways never stopped at our cottage. This wizard was unusual. He turned off the road and walked right past me without saying anything, straight up to our cottage. Then he banged on the door with the head of his staff. The door splintered and fell apart. I decided that I didn't like him. Mother was cooking rabbit stew in the big black pot over the chimney fire. She didn't even look up when the door fell in. The wizard stood there for a minute and I sneaked a little closer so I could see better. He was frowning, and I got the impression he wasn't used to being ignored. Mother kept stirring the stew. Well, Cimarrone, I have found you, the wizard said at last. (sighs) It took you long enough, Mother said without turning. You're getting slow. You know why I am here. Mother shrugged. You're 16 years too late. I told you, you're getting slow. Ha! I can take the sword now and the boy as well. There is nothing you can do to stop me this time, the wizard said. I could tell that he was trying to sound menacing, but he didn't do a very good job. Mother finally turned around. I took one look at her face and backed up a couple steps. She looked at the wizard for a minute and started to smile. Nothing, Antorel. Are you sure? The wizard laughed and raised his staff. I backed up some more. I mean, I wanted to see what was going on, but I'm not stupid. He paused a moment for effect, I think. And Mother pointed at him. Arjo Fraster, she said. And he started to melt. No, not again, he screamed. He shrank pretty quickly all but his head, which was shouting nearly the whole time. I'll get you, Cimarrone! I'll be back! You can't stop me! And then his head collapsed, and there was nothing left but a little puddle of brown goo and his staff. 
I stared at the puddle. All I could think was, well, I never knew Mother could do that. <laughs> I think I'll stop there. <laughs> That's book bites. Yeah, talking to dragons. A great fantasy. I love a good fantasy. And this one... Yeah, book four in a Chronicles, to be this good to start off with, and the whole book is wonderful. Yes, the boy has more adventures and that has to deal with the enchanted forest and his mom, who's obviously not who he had always thought her to be. Well, yeah. So if you like dragons, like fantasies, check this one out. Talking to Dragons by Patricia C. Reed, and Reed is spelled W-R-E-D-E. -E. I think you'll enjoy it. But for now, that's Book Bites with the Book Lady, and yeah, I think my dragons are satisfied. You guys okay with that? Yeah, they're okay with it. They're happy, although they want to hear more. Hmm. Until next time, everybody. Keep looking for the beauty hidden in plain sight. It's all around you. But, you know, the first place you'll find it is if you go look in the mirror. And take a dragon with you. I'll see you next time.